We're back. It's nice. Dominic is out here in Chicago. And I got uh, Martin uh, Friendship from Canada. How are you, man? Doing very well. Thank you very much for having me out tonight. Martin you know, surprised us by stopping in class tonight. Uh, you do Wing Chun and uh, martial arts out in uh, Canada? Uh, yeah, so I do uh, Praying Mantis Kung Fu uh, and MMA up in uh, Ottawa, uh, Ottawa, Canada. Can you tell us a bit about your school, please? Uh, absolutely. Uh, Wu Tan Canada has been around. Uh, our head Sifu is Sifu John Hum. Uh, we train out of Ottawa in Algonquin College and Carleton University. Uh, we've been around for probably 20, 30 years. Uh, we're always happy to come down and uh, exchange knowledge uh, with anyone we can meet. So I'm very happy that Dominic uh, would have me come out tonight. Absolutely. And then you guys have a YouTube page too, don't you? Uh, we do. So you can find our YouTube page. It's uh, Montreal Mantis uh, on YouTube. All right. Well, I'll attach the bottom of the link to that too. Um, we were going over just some basic drills today, uh, Chris and uh, Martin were working together. And then Martin brought up a great question um, at the end of this, which once again goes for that size, smaller person versus larger person um, uh, Wing Chun uh, debate. So ask your question because I want to answer it on camera, please. Uh, so the question that I had uh, is, as we were trapping the arm uh, at the very end of the drill we were doing, I was wondering if my hand stayed out and then I punched up, or did I retract to bring my hand so back. So the drill we were doing, you punched, I believe, we kicked it off with. That's right, so I was coming in, strike, back, uh, and then from here, uh, actually you're... Well, from the, okay, punch. This is the other drill we did here. Go, and then... Strike, um, gum. I came in, mm -hmm. and was coming up here. Back. Does this pull back? Little man's Wing Chun. All right, so somebody put up online a, a Gary Lamb video uh, the other day, and uh, T, if you can back up, we'll get to all of us here because I want you to see the, uh, the, the footwork. So, uh, a little closer, brother, a little closer. So, <laughs> all right, cut. And um, so the, the video was of Gary Lamb, and two of his students were in the middle of the video, and they were sparring. And, I mean, they were full force coming in with some great strikes right to the jaw coming in. They were stopping each other's forward motion. Really, really impressive. And then Gary jumps in. And he talks to them about swallowing the energy, letting the energy come back, and then redirecting the attack. Number one, please make this perfectly clear, all you fantastic internet trolls. I am not questioning Gary Lamb. I will not question Gary Lamb. The guy is amazing. What I will question is his size. Gary Lamb, from what I was told, I have never met him, is 6'2". How tall are you? I'm 6'6". Six, six. What Gary was doing was he was allowing people to step in and punch. So can you throw in a step of punch here? And he was stepping back, stepping and punch again, and stepping and punch again. And then he was taking that energy and redirecting and, and attacking. So, back up again, please. Let's do it. So throw three punches at me. Got one, two, and he was he was just redirecting and coming back. As a smaller person, personally, my Wing Chun says never to do that. Martin's got the reach for me to do that. I'm gonna step in, I'm gonna punch right and left and right at you. Boom and boom. And boom, he's got all this distance where he can do that, okay? What the answer to the question and first form, going back to that basic video we did the other day with the hips going in, what I always wanna do is I wanna maintain my ground. If we get to the position where somebody fires a punch at me and I'm here and I can stop that, I'm not gonna let that second one come in and do this because I'm going backwards. I don't ever wanna go backwards with a more aggressive, bigger, stronger energy. When I said in the last video, the hips have both got to come in on someone, okay, uh, punch left please, and then punch right. So if I'm here, I'm gonna punch here, and there's pressure coming in at me, I'm not gonna replace that and let it go. If you come in at me, keep your pressure coming in, I wanna keep that and allow that energy to come in, go to the ground and hit that, and then hit at the same time. So my energies are both hands are gonna be going in. I know when we do the center line punch, one hand comes back, one hand comes forward, one hand comes back, one hand comes forward. If you really apply it, and Martin punches, and I go to lop. Do I really want to invite a person this big into me to hit him? You can punch, and then when I invite you in, I want you to take, take me, dominate me. I don't think I can handle that. Let's try it again, okay? Okay, let's try it again. All right, say my Wing Chun sucks, whatever you want. Let's look at a different application. Go ahead, do it again. What'd you feel that time? I'm all locked up. Okay, right now, I'm putting both those energies in, in, into them. Okay, let's do it again. How do you feel now? Still locked up. As a smaller person, personally, I feel this is a better, better instance to deal with somebody larger. Step in, you can step in, throw the three punches a little bit faster again too. If he keeps coming, 
I'm not going to be able to deal with that. Okay, let's try it again. He's all over me. As a smaller person, don't back up. It's just my two cents on that. So to answer the question, if you have contact somewhere, you can fire that without pulling his back. You know, don't you don't have to replace. You don't have to lop it in. Stay it and stay on target. And keep both of that pressure energies going in. It's going back to the first concept of facing. My hips are facing into him. Remember we covered that in the last video. That means my elbows can still come in and face him. You can keep both of these energies in here. If he pulls this arm back, it's still there to fire forward. So when aggressive energy comes in, keep that forward. Always keep that energy going forward. It's part of the the, the fuchs out that we do in, in its first form. Okay, our, our form has two different fuchs out applications with uh, drawing back. We have one, and most schools will pull with the elbow. And then two, and pull with the elbow. Ours, we have two different types. We go forward, first set, elbow stays. We project that elbow energy forward while we draw that hand back and still project that energy going forward. So it's not collapsible. That's one, bring it back in. And the second one is draw the elbow back. So we are getting both applications where if I punch and he stops it, okay, I'm here, I do have that lopsaw energy. Or if he punches and he stops it, I do have that elbow energy still going forward. You're just learning to keep the idea on it both. So to answer the question, in my opinion, as a smaller man, facing somebody who's as gigantic as this, if that punch comes in, and I go to lock, and he keeps coming in, I'm not going to stop it, guys. From a, from a bigger point of view, do you, do you feel in control? Uh, I feel very in control. And as a taller guy, I like it when shorter guys back up, because it means we're always resetting the range for me. I don't want that. You throw that punch, I feel now. It's much tougher on me, and I'm all locked up. This hand, if, you, if I, I'm not going to lap here, I'm going to keep both these hands going in and in. Remember, infancy, adolescent, adult, why do I want to concentrate on pulling when that hand's free when I keep all that stuff going in? So to answer the question, work both ways. If he had the lapse out, he could pull. He could both pin and pull me. Skilled mass versus skilled mass, the bigger mass is always going to win. All right? Anything to add on that? Uh, yeah, as, a, uh, as I say, as a bigger guy, uh, one of the things I always like to do, especially in MMA, uh, is if I can get people backing up, that's great because every time we back up, we're back at my range, and I can come in and I can start working the legs and working the body. If I'm in here, now we're trading, and we're trading at range that I can get hit. Uh, if Dominic puts out his hand, just leave it straight out, I want to be out like this because every time he steps back, I don't have to step back nearly as far as him. And I can chase, and I can hit, and I can start to hammer him. So uh, with him moving in, it locks me right up. And as a big guy, I don't want to be in close. Okay, that's, I mean, that's just frightening being a tail end of this. I don't ha I, that hand I have no control over. So again, remember, 5'7", my Wing Chun is always going to be from a smaller man's point of view, and it's got to be destructive. Get in, do the damage, don't let up. Eight so minutes. In, in an application like the Gary Lamb video, I'm not disagreeing with him. Gary Lamb is 6'2". He's allowed to do whatever he wants. He can back up, swallow energy, swallow energy, swallow energy, and then go in. But if you watch the energy, and I'll put, or I'll put a link at the bottom of the film, but if you watch the, the two students to begin with, in my opinion, those two students were awesome. They were attacking going in, and they were stopping each other cold. That's what Wing Chun should be. So that's, thank you for coming Perfect. out. Well, thank you that. very much for having and, me. And uh, really check out their YouTube channel. Subscribe, and we'll see you on the next video.